So um, welcome. I think you should all be seeing my face and everything. And you should be able to see me uh, appropriately, like you see a whole side view of me. Um, uh, welcome. You know, I am Anthony Stover with Georgia Empowerment, the Youth Engagement Coordinator. I host a lot of different trainings and webinars, as well as our podcast. Uh, we're doing a lot of things to make sure that our brothers and sisters in care have have the tools that they need in order to be able to succeed. Um, so some of the upcoming things that we're getting ready to do are things like we're getting ready to host uh, host with um, DHS as well as with UGA and a few others. Um, we're trying to put together an entrepreneurship training uh, course, uh, bringing in some great, some great leaders. So you should be receiving a, a survey uh, to tell us what you need to know in order to build your business, whether you want a website, what, a mentor or, or what have you. Uh, we're going to be doing our cooking series, going to continue that. If you have not received um, the quiz to be able to win the air fryer, uh, please look in your spam box because I, um, there, right now there are three in the top runnings and as well as we're going to be giving away some other stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different things over, over the next uh, few months, as well as I'm going to be doing a leadership training course for, for young people who want to be involved with empowerment and, and learn how to facilitate workshops. I'm looking for somebody to take over, take over all these platforms and uh, we'll, we'll pay you to, to do those things. Today um, is one of our resource, uh, I'm going to just call it resource roundup. I don't have an official name for it, um, but uh, we have been fortunate enough to, to be involved with uh, Kennesaw uh, State University for, for a couple of years, especially um, during the, uh, what, what was it, the college, college Brown? Uh, is that College Brown and, um, what is it, was it College Brown? Uh, it was, it, we've done, done so many things as well as we've had empowerment meetings uh, by some of our, our young leaders um, held, held there. Um, and, uh, and now we just want to make sure that you know who, can, who KSU is, what they do, as well as, um, as, well as the Garrett program. Um, if you receive the email and you're signing on, you're signing on because you are interested in trying to figure out how to pick the right college for you. Um, so with that being said, I want to introduce our survivor, our destiny child who is on right now. Uh, Katie, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, Anthony. Yes, I feel like a survivor today. I made it through a hailstorm to get here. So it was a legit hailstorm today? Yeah. Wow. I, I, I thought you were just saying that arbitrarily. Like, I, I didn't know it was a hailstorm. I mean, it was, it was coming down. Oh, wow. I was a little worried, but, okay. but I'm glad I made it. I'm so grateful that you guys are here with me today, too. Um, I guess I could give you a little bit of a background. Mm -hmm. It feels, uh, I just keep getting older. Like, I just had my birthday, and it's like, now that I'm getting older, there's a lot more background to cover, so <laughs> it's uh, kind of weird, but we are um, very, just kind of amazed that we've made it this far. So, um I am currently working at Kennesaw State University, and lucky for me, I was also a student at Kennesaw State University. I'm not going to tell you what year, because that would be embarrassing, but uh, <laughs> I also attended Oxford College at Emory University, and um, I did dual enrollment as a senior here at Kennesaw State. So I went away for a little bit, but I came back, and I just keep coming back to Kennesaw State, and I have to tell you, there is a lot of exciting stuff happening here, um, especially things that you all as um, hopefully soon to be high school graduates could benefit from. So I'll definitely make sure to spend some time talking about that a little bit later, um, but I don't wanna just narrow it down to Kennesaw State because going to college is quite an experience. Um, I had an idea about what I wanted to do and I hope that with some of the questions that I posed today that you'll start to make those decisions for yourself. It is a very unique experience. I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of people in your life with lots of opinions about what the best choice for you will be, um, but you certainly need, this is something that's gonna take some time for you to explore for yourself. So uh, I don't wanna, don't wanna like sell kind of state, but it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not biased. I'm not biased at all. Uh, 
Is it, oh, would it be okay if I share my screen just so I don't get lost? I mean, this is this is this is all all you. Where I'm here to learn from you, wow, as well as everybody me. everybody that's on on Zoom. Um, actually, while you do that, I'm gonna be uh, making sure that I'm looking at my uh, the Facebook uh, live stream to make oh, sure yeah. there aren't any questions up there as well. Oh, really? You, now, if you guys do have questions, feel free to drop one in the chat. I would say you could come off mute, but I don't know that that's an option for you. So um, just send us a message. I'll be happy to answer things as I go along. Um, and you can also email me after and I'll drop my email in the chat. So if there's anything specifically that I can help um, with, actually, while you I can do that. Sorry. No, you <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to pull up a quick little, is it, okay, so if I share my screen, it's going to stop your sound share. Oh, do that. Are you sure? Yes, I'm not important right now. Are you sure? I really <laughs> like the music. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, guys, hopefully you can see my presentation over here that says college match and fit. Not too scary. Um, they're kind of weird words but um, it'll all come together by the end of it. And um, like I said, I'm here with Gear Up Georgia and we are focused right now on helping high school students get to college, um, specifically students that have experienced homelessness or the foster care system. So um, if you do want to get more involved, we'll chat about it toward the end. All right. so. Um, I guess the best place to start when you're thinking about colleges is like, what are you going to, why are you even going to go to college? Like what, what's your end goal? Um, and you certainly don't want to do something that you don't love, right? Um, this is the opportunity in your life that you can change your future. You have um, the chance to make decisions now that are going to get you closer and closer to your goals. Um, like people like me, we're a little bit further down the road. We're having to do like a big big redirection um, if we're trying to get back to something that we love. Um, so this is a really great opportunity for you guys. What's kind of amazing though, is that it's also okay to change your mind if you do um, decide that there's something else that you love more. And there are a few different ways to explore. So we'll talk about that now. Um, if any of you guys have access to the following um, tools at your high school, um, they are really great ways to help kind of narrow down the um, the things that you might be more equipped for um, or that you really love. So um, U-Science, I did that one myself recently. That was pretty impressive. I want to say when I was a kid, they did um, like career aptitude tests and it was like, oh, you're going to be a great garbage truck driver or something. And it wasn't like, wasn't really like empowering or anything. It didn't really give you a whole lot of leverage or things to work from. So what's really exciting is that you science um, not only paints a picture of like things that you would be good at based on your skill set, but also um, things that you love based on questions that you answer. So you'll definitely want to take a look at you science. Uh, as of 2017, I haven't found anything recent to to say this, but I believe all students in Georgia have access to use science for free. So um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that that would be a really great place to start. Uh, a lot of schools, high schools especially, have Naviance as one of their programs that they encourage students to work within. And that'll be like a whole package deal when you're looking at what, um, what things you wanna do and how to get there when it comes to graduating high school and getting to college. Um, GCIS I'm not very familiar with, so please don't um, quote me on this one, but um, I would definitely check it out if that is what is available to you. I really don't think these tools can hurt you um, because I think, I don't know if you guys get this way, but when there are lots of opportunities in front of me, I can get really overwhelmed and uh, I have problems making decisions. So um, I would definitely just take the opportunity. You don't have to do the first job that it points you to. Um, it's just one step in the process as you decide what you really enjoy taking yeah. care of. And um, Rhoda, I believe they are all free as long as you have access 
through your school. Um, so it's worth asking the questions. The people that you'll want to talk to are your guidance counselors. If you don't have access to these things after our presentation today, email me because I might be able to get um, access through uh, Kennesaw State. And I'd be happy to help you guys with that. As well um, as as well as since that is school related, uh, you might want to get you might be able to talk with your uh, independent living specialist um, about that, or your uh, or your case manager to see if if they can um, get that taken care of for you. Um, they may also have. I'm not sure. Um, I, I think it's the uh, the Ansel Casey uh, life assessment uh, mm -hmm. as well. So so uh, that may be something else, uh, but. It's, it's great to have multiple multiple options so it can guide you in the right direction. You you choose you choose what uh, what you want to do out of, out of those options, but uh, definitely check with your school like uh, like Katie at, uh, suggested. Yeah, and life experience will drive your wishes and goals. So the more experience you get in the area that you think you love the better equipped you'll be to make those those decisions. So that is kind of the next point, um, you'll want to look into these potential jobs once you decide what your top choices are, right? Um, ways you can do that are through career exploration webinars. Those are COVID friendly right now. Um, Gear Up Georgia has a few of those on their website, which I'll point you to at the end of this um, presentation. We have, uh, you could go to a summer camp on a college campus um, related to the career field that you're hoping to go into. So let's say you really wanna go into the medical field and you um, find a program on a college campus close to you, go ahead and take a look at that. Um, and if you're eligible for Gear Up Georgia, we would be paying for that. So it hopefully not cost you guys anything to participate in that. Um, I would like to, um, Kennesaw State does have a lot of cool things going on this summer, but I have to tell you my favorite thing that I found so far is a free camp out of the CDC Museum. I am, that's my master's. I did my master's in public health. I love diseases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird. I know COVID has been a little too close for comfort because it's like living the outbreak, um, not my favorite experience thus far, but it's been fascinating. And um, the CDC Museum does a free camp each summer. So if that's something you want to get involved in, go ahead and put your application in there. Say that again. Do you have an age limit? I don't know, but I want to be part of it. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, gosh. If I could get off work long enough to go to that, I would say sign me up. Or they need volunteers. They could need volunteers. Yes, yes. Um, and that's a great way to learn more about things too. You can apply to or um, offer to volunteer with an organization that you think you might want to work with in the future. Um, there are lots of organizations I would have loved to volunteer for, but I know how hard it can be when you have bills to pay <laughs> to volunteer. So don't stress. Another way to do that is to ask, um, ask a professional in that field if you could shadow them. Ways you can get in touch with people like that are probably through your guidance counselors at school. I would check, honestly, I would check with anybody, any trusted adult that you know, and just start telling them, this is what I wanna do. Do you know anybody that does this for a living? And that networking is gonna get you really far. Um, and like I said, your school counselor will be a really great resource for, um, for getting you some more information around that career that you're hoping to go into. Um, things that you probably want to start asking when you make that decision. And usually a lot of these tools that I talked about do paint a pretty good picture of um, like the demand for the job. Uh, let's say nurses are in high demand right now, right? So um, it's probably pretty certain that you'll be able to find a job when you get out of school for nursing. What's the salary like? I mean, I love what I do and I do what I love and sometimes it doesn't pay well. <laughs> so uh, it's just something that you want to take into consideration. What does a typical day on the job look like? Um, some of those career exploration webinars do go into that. We had a gentleman um, that works for, I'm now blanking on the organization, but it is a, he's a marine biologist and he works on a ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. 
which was incredible. So if you have a chance to check that one out, it's um, careers in science, I believe. And I was just bored. And his job is like a 24 seven all the time for months on end. Um, if you love it, then I'm sure it probably would not feel like a job, but maybe that's not your style. So um, the next thing is how long is it gonna take you to get there? Uh, and then what schools offer these programs? What's really cool is there are lots of free tools that do have this information available to you. And we'll go to that website in just a few minutes. It's called Big Futures um, by the College Board, I think. Yeah, the Big Future College Search Tool. So we'll go there shortly. Um, the last piece, when you open up to people, they will have opinions. And it's okay if you don't agree with your opinion. I told a woman that I wanted to go to medical school. And she said, oh gosh, it's way too hard. You're not gonna be able to do it. And I was like, what? what a drag. Like just because it was hard for you doesn't mean it's gonna right. be hard for me. Um, so that was really um, disheartening, I guess, is the best way to, a good word to use. There will be people out there that will tell you it's not a good idea, whatever you've decided on. So just be ready. Have your, you know, have your shield on, ready to go. You don't have to listen to them if you don't want to. Yeah, that but, reminds me of that scene in, um, in The Pursuit of Happiness where uh, his kid was shooting a basketball and uh, he was like, he, like he, he, uh, he discour discouraged him from doing it. He's like, don't ever let anybody tell you not to, not to do your dream or whatever. Yeah, whatever. yeah, don't let somebody tell you that you, that you can't do it or whatever. If that's something that you want to do, it may be hard for them. It still may be difficult for you, but at the hard. end, you'll still like, that's what you wanted to do. That's right, yep. I did um, hear of a student recently, she was told, she wanted to go to Georgia Tech and she was told by her counselor at school um, that her grades weren't high enough. And it may be true, but if she really wanted to make that happen, she still had two years of school to turn her GPA around. Mm -hmm. And um, if you guys are willing to work for it, don't let them tell you no. And, um, just because they're a school counselor doesn't mean that they are the expert either. You are the expert on you. Okay, so uh, we will jump over. All of these, like in this pursuit of your future, you're gonna have a lot of feelings come up and it's gonna be kind of overwhelming at times and that's completely fine. Um, but I did want you to talk, talk, stop and take the time, not talk and take the time. Stop and take the time to kind of go through these feelings that you're having. Um, there are questions that are probably gonna come up and they will make a big difference on where you decide to go and what you decide to do. So um, are you going to, what does success look like for you? I mean, if my goal was to drive a Porsche and um, carry the most expensive handbag and get my hair done, hair and nails done, that doesn't happen here, um, then I probably would not have gone into the field of public health. Um, so maybe I would have done something different, like pharmaceutical sales, um, which is not a very high demand job. Just going to put that out there, but you do make a lot of money. So it um, takes a certain type of individual to do that and do it well. Is your goal to make a lot of money? Maybe the career path that you're choosing is going to get you there. So these are things that you want to start taking into consideration. One of my favorites that I like always go back to is like, are you a risk taker? Is this something that you feel good doing? Um, and a job in sales would probably require a lot of risk. You get your base salary, but then maybe you can earn more, but it's not guaranteed. So are you willing to take that risk uh, for the reward? And then, um, Really, all you have to reflect on is your school experience so far. You don't really know what college is going to look like, but you do know how you feel in high school. Um, for me, I graduated with 2,500 people, I think, and I didn't even know half of them that walked across the stage. And that really was so important to me to be different in college. So that's why I went um, to Oxford at Emory, because it's like an 800 students at the school in total. So. Um, I really loved the opportunity to get uh, a closer contact with my students, uh, with my classmates. I had really great relationships with my professors. I could go to them anytime I needed help. 
Um, but maybe you like being a number. Maybe you like getting lost in the crowd and doing your own thing and not having to answer to anyone. And, um, and honestly, there are lots of different options out there. So whatever it is that works for you, you will figure it out. And um, I, somebody asked what GPA you need to get into Kennesaw. And I don't think that there is a minimum, um, but there is an average. So that's gonna be the, uh, the number that you wanna look at. Um, if you have other skills or volunteer hours, or um, you have a really impressive history back, backstory, um, maybe the GPA won't weigh as much, but um, I wanna say, I'm like trying to pull it up for you, but I'm really bad at doing things, two things at the same time. So I'm gonna figure that out for you and I'll get you your answer by the end of today. Um, so let me pull up that tool, that big futures tool that I was telling you guys about, because I think that will help us learn all sorts of things about ourselves today. Um, and I, I could be your guinea pig or we could have somebody. Uh, yeah, uh, anybody we, that wants we, to We could bring somebody on who wants to be the guinea pig for this big futures tool. I love tool. that. That's a great idea. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my screen one more time, guys. I'm sorry, I hope you don't feel like I'm taking you on a wild goose chase all over the place, but um, can you see the Gear Up Georgia webpage here? Um, this is a really great landing spot if you're not quite sure where to go next. Um, you can go over to the resources tab at the gearupgeorgia.org and then drop down boop, 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 a little bit lower to the Big Future College Search Tool. I was so impressed by this. I wish they had had this for me when I was looking for colleges. It was so <laughs> overwhelming. Um, so there is this cool new college search available. I almost wanna click on it. Ooh, how risky is that? Oh good, we're right in the same place. Okay. So, um, gosh, what do we want to choose? Anthony, do you want to go to college? Um, sure. I want to see, wait, we have two, we have two comments. Um, oh, I love it. If, yeah. So it, uh, is this about what college, colleges we want to, uh, we want to, I assume go to or to do. And the answer to that question is, um, yes and no, this is about how do you, how do you choose the right college for you or, or, or what have you? Um, and, uh, I go to a future school, which is a uh, comment, and I'm not sure what a future school is, unless they're talking about like stocks or or something like that. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, um, and I'm curious if anybody wants to come on and um, and do this tool. Oh, <laughs> if anybody wants to come on and and do and do this tool live, uh, so that you know where where you fit, uh, I'll give you ten seconds to to uh, to pipe up. Go ahead and join if, us. If not, it'll just it'll it'll be me. I'll be choosing a, a school. Um, <laughs> I love it. And you can go ahead and ask your question, uh, DeAndre. I, I will read it. And um, there's another question in the Q and A. Uh, what is the yearly tuition for Kennesaw? Those are such good questions. Oh my gosh, guys! I'm gonna have to pull up the whole KSU website. Um, if you go to Kennesaw.edu and look up the admissions tab, um, likely that information is gonna be right there. Um, they're pretty good about, um, they're pretty good about publishing that. Um, it's a really great resource these days. Uh, I just know that websites aren't that fun to search on. Right. But I have this weird feeling if we look on this college search that we're gonna do in just a second here, we will probably get all of that information as well. So I think we have a volunteer, um, oh. Blanca, uh Opez. we would love for you to join us yes hey awesome hey how are you doing good how are you i am well i'm happy that that's you that you stepped up yeah. <laughs> so um you're gonna help us choose the right college for i, I apparently for you so <laughs> so blanca do you already know what major you want to study or are you thinking more sci I want to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian. Mm -hmm. I want to be a vet. I love it. Okay. Um do you have let's go, let's just do that for the major. Actually, I don't know that it's a major, but we're gonna try the specialty here. Nope, that's not what we wanted. You guys are seeing what I'm seeing, right? So a specialty would be like yes, for a black college and university. 
um, institutions that are serving Hispanic students, all women, all men. Could be cool. Could be very cool. Um, I think we're going to go the major route. What do you want to study? Veterinarian. Let's do pre-veterinary studies because you want to go all the way, right? You want to be a veterinarian, not yeah. just a vet tech. Okay. Very exciting. Well, gosh, this is very serious, guys. I don't know. I can see how this would be really overwhelming. What do you want to study? Veterinary. Mm -hmm. Want to be a vet? I want. I can't believe this is asking me for the same question again. I know, right? <laughs> Maybe we'll put both. Oh, you can study more than one thing. Oh, it's all coming together now. I would imagine you'll probably have to do some biology. But I don't. Biology, physical science. Yeah, all the good stuff. So we're going to just go to the next step. We're going to continue. Ah, I'm so nervous. Okay, <laughs> so, um, well, now you've already, you have 420 schools to choose from at this point if you want to do pre-vet studies. So a lot to choose from. Um, do you like cold weather? Nope. <laughs> Girl after my own heart. Seriously, I decided this was as far north as I can go. I will not live further north. If you guys find me further north than this, send help. It's going to be bad. Um, so we're going to look at location next. How about that? Um, you would like to study inside the U.S. or outside? Outside of the U.S. Wow, we're going way, we're going all the way out. I don't know that we need to choose the countries. Do we have to choose countries? Korea. You would like to go to Korea? South Korea. I don't know that they're going to let you in the north, even if you wanted to go. Um, so. No, um, <laughs> there's nothing to do in North Korea. <laughs> that is there, not a country we can trouble. Yeah. Are there any other countries that you would be interested in studying in as a backup? If you, if you're not South Korea, then United States, the inside of the United States. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to have to go back to that one in just a minute. So Korea first, and then we will go, Sorry. we'll just look and see if there are any programs outside. Oh gosh, your dreams have been dashed. It, there's, it's not to say that there aren't programs in Korea, it's just that College Board probably doesn't know about them yet. So don't panic, Okay. there's hope yet. It's um, fine. Let's check. So here in the United States, we're looking at, what state? Do you wanna stick around? You wanna stay in Georgia for a bit? Yeah, Georgia. From the Hope, scholarship, Pell Grant, could be, could be worthwhile sticking around. Um, so seven colleges here in Georgia have pre-veterinary studies. Do you know what kind of what size school you wanna to go to? Can you say that again? Maybe the size, do you want a smaller university or a big one? Mm, not not small and not that big either, like Ooh. a medium size. How about that? We've got the medium option. Okay, so it looks like Athens Technical College is a two-year institution that um, probably has a pre-veterinary tech or a veterinary tech program. Um, Central T Georgia Tech also has a pre-vet um, program. Fort Valley State, that's a four-year program. So I would imagine that's a pre-veterinary program. Gwinnett Tech. What is the difference between the two years and the four years? Um, Two-year universities typically provide you with um, a, an associate's degree or a technical degree. Um, a four-year degree would get you a bachelor's degree. I want a bachelor. Yeah. So I think what this is what is throwing us off here, this animal health tech piece. This is so interesting. Well, and you can back yourself up too. You know what's so surprising to me right now is that UGA is not showing up on this list and UGA has an incredible veterinary program. And it may be because yes. it's a large school. I don't, I don't want this to be the be all and end all for you, but I like it. 
So what I'm going to do is you can see if you click on that link that pops up when you first get onto the Big Future site, um, you can go through this kind of choice selection, or you can pop over here to the original Big Future site. And then um, I would do um, major in career search. It's pretty cool. Let's go to science, math, and technology. Um, let's just look at this. Well, I need physical science, biology. Oh, yeah. Um, Become a veterinarian. Uh, uh, what, what grade are you in, Blanca? 10. You're in 10? Yeah. Awesome. Have you, ever, have you already started applying for scholarships and things? Not really. Okay, let, it, let us know because uh, one, one uh, organization that you definitely should be looking out for one, once you get uh, ready to is um, in sorrow because they help, um, they, they uh, give scholarships for young people who transition from foster care. I'm thinking about going to the military too. I want to see if you first I go to the military and then to um, the college or first college and then the military. So I can tell you the perks of, of, of either one. I'm military, so if you go, uh, so if you go straight to, straight to college, then to the military. If you have your degree, then you can go in as an officer. Um, if you go to the military, uh, then they have different programs where you can, uh, where they'll they'll help pay for your uh, pay for your college, and then you come back and um, get higher rank and, and things like that. So um, there there are perks for for each one. So I like this search a lot better. You can select your filters on the left and then do you, um, it'll pop up all sorts of universities that you can study. So I chose animal sciences. Let's assume that that'll get us closer to our veterinary. Science. Yeah, definitely need animal science. I like it. Um, so you can go as close to home as you want by looking at um, your zip code or you can give yourself a region. So I put the south. That's assuming that it's not going to get too cold. Um, and then you can find regions outside the US. And we can do more options. So we close it, see some results. Oh, are you kidding me? There's nobody in the South that wants to study animal studies. I'm so confused. Wow. <laughs> um, as you probably will figure out quickly, is you don't go to school for veterinary studies, right? You go for pre-vet studies, which would probably look like a degree in chemistry or biology. So let's... Um, pop in there and see what we can do. Pre-veterinary studies. Having way too much fun with this, guys. Can you tell? <laughs> um, you can look at test scores, um, the test scores and selectivity at the top. I never did really well on my SAT and ACT, so I would probably want to pull that up and make sure I wasn't reaching too far. Um, but we have um, types of schools. Let's do a medium-sized school for your college or university because we already know you want to get your bachelor's. Yeah. And um, you can do all sorts of other things here. Campus and housing. You can decide if you want to live on campus. Um, sports and activities. Academic credit. How much is it going to cost? Could be important. But if you start writing for scholarships now, you're going to be set. Um, and then diversity. I love that. I really want, I mean, like it gives you an opportunity to decide, do you want to be surrounded by people that, um, you know, are just like you, um, or do you want a little bit of a difference? Um, so let's save the selections and see, still nothing I don't understand. Let's see. What There's happens. different websites. Yeah. They don't, maybe they think that we really want to go to South Korea. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> they think we only want to go to South Korea. So oh. <laughs> we have we have just opened up all sorts of excitement here. These are all the schools. Wow. Yeah, I would love to go to South Korea, but if I can, then I stay in the United States. Yeah, that would be really cool. Be really cool. Um, so we have all these different options for you. Let's see. Um, I really wanted to look up UGA because I feel like that would be an awesome opportunity. 
if you can make that happen for veterinary studies. It looks like it is listed in alphabetical order. How convenient. Minnesota is going to be way too cold. P-Q-R-S-T-U. Oh, we're not there quite yet. I have to say my alphabet sometimes, guys. Gosh, they're just not showing up either. This is when you just go to the website. Yep. Yep. And anytime you need help, we're here for you. Um, so let's say you figured out where you want to go and you chose Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. You want to go in South Georgia. Um, and then it takes you to like a little snippet of information about them. So we've got the median SAT, deadlines, application information. Um, and then I think it's not going to tell us about the GPA here, but it's pretty cool. It's a really great tool and it's free. So no stress. You don't have to log in if you don't want. I haven't logged in. And it seems like I can still access a lot of the information. So um, I feel like we're getting lost over here in this big future search. It's just a lot going on. Um, and it's okay. These are things that you might want to break down into smaller chunks. Uh, maybe give yourself an hour to work on it and just like close your book, shut your laptop, turn off your screen, put your phone down, take a deep breath. You don't have to make all the decisions right now, but the earlier you make some of them, the benefits um, are probably greater, right? If you know yeah, what you want to go to and you know how much money you need, um, you'll know what your goal is for scholarship writing, right? Um, if you start talking yeah. to your ILS, you're going to know how much money you're going to be able to um, work with for an ETV. Um, so that's another option for you guys that you wanna make sure you're choosing an institution that's accredited um, because ETV funds cannot be used for non-accredited programs. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some options there. I wanna stop for just a second because I'm getting overwhelmed by that one page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a really good sign, isn't it? The person that's supposed to be really good at this stuff um, can't even manage. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There were a few other things I wanted to chat about, but I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to ask any questions. Yeah. Um, you guys have been hitting up the Q and A session, so that's really cool. But um, it's just it's a process. Don't feel like you have to have all of your answers today. Definitely use the tools that have been you know provided for you to look into this, and then yeah. Uh, sorry. Feel free to chat over me. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's good. Oh, good. Um, I do have a couple other websites that I wanted to show you and then tell you a little bit about Gear Up. Is that okay, Anthony? Of course, yes. Definitely. For anybody that is um, able to benefit from it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to pop this up really fast. Thank you, uh, Blanca. I'm a, um, yeah. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> She's so brave. So brave to make it through. Okay, so Gear Up Georgia, like I said, um, we're here, we're housed at Kansas State, but we're functioning as a Department of Education um, funded grant. Uh, and we're able to serve students in junior year or senior year of high school that are residing in these counties. And I'll show you which ones because it's a long list. Um, these counties, as long as you guys are attending the schools in these counties, um, the school districts, counties, not the city, um, school districts, unfortunately, um, but we can work with you through Gear Up Georgia and you have access to different things um, for free. Um, I don't want to get everybody too excited, but for those of you that can, um, you can go to the KSU Gear Up website. It's gearup.kennesaw.edu and um, you can register yourself there. The things you'll have access to is Scholarship Academy. You can um, go ahead and do like a really tailored scholarship search on there. Um, they also help you with essay writing. You have access to 24-7 tutoring through tutor.com. You can take um, prep classes for the ACT and SAT. Uh, so those will be, I don't know if those will be required by universities moving forward after COVID, but it is likely. So I would go ahead and start preparing for that if you're in your junior year, especially. 
Um, and uh, you can get a mentor with Student Success Agency. They're pretty cool. Um, Somebody said, uh, uh, I think they asked uh, if you're in Covington. I don't think. Just Covington. outside, just outside. Oh, isn't that what, terrible? So so is it is it that they have to be living in Covington or are living in, in these uh, areas or, or the school has to be in those areas or could their case like, for instance, we might have some young people that are that whose case plan is in Cobb County, but they live in Savannah. Like how? Huh? <laughs> Things are so challenging sometimes. Um, yeah. It because we partner with the school district to put on different events. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be attending the school in the district. So luckily, Chatham is Savannah, so that Savannah student might just be covered. But um, it does make it really challenging when we have students that are homeschooling or alternate schooling. Um, it just really takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. Because I would love to help everybody. And if there is something I can help you with, just let me know because I'm here to do that. Um, Anthony, I don't want to take, I don't know how much time I have left. I, have I, have, I did. This is, this is all you. Like <laughs> I have games we can play. Give me games. I like games. Oh my gosh. I don't know that there are any prizes involved, but we can play games and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. So this is going to get us talking about where you think you're going to fit in at college. We're talking about those moments where <laughs> worst case scenarios. These are the things that um, I've been talking to some people and they're like, you need to just give your kids a chance to play out these scenarios in their head and it will be, it will help them be more equipped when they finally get on campus. So these will be some opportunities for us to chit chat. I want to see you guys blow up the chat with what you think the right answer is for worst case scenario number one. And if you are not watching, I will read it out to you. Um, you have only missed one class so far this semester. That's pretty impressive. And taken notes during class. But when you get your first test returned from the professor, you only scored a 68. So your options are A, quit the class. Ooh. B, wait until the next test to see if you improve. Or C, go visit your professor to express concern and seek help. You tell me what you think the right answer is. And um, I will tell you that going to class is a great idea. <laughs> I can't tell you how many peers of mine thought that finally I'm in college, I don't have to go anywhere if I don't want to. And guess what? They blew $40,000 because they dropped out of their first year of college. And do you know how happy their parents were? Yeah. It was not good. It was not good. Or I had a friend who decided to play video games all night long and he missed all of his classes at eight o'clock in the morning. Stop picking up. Also, lost an entire year and that, that's what's so cool about college guys you get to choose when and if you go to class but i have to say from personal experience it pays off to show up because when you go begging your professor for help and they haven't seen your face all semester what do you think they're gonna do i don't know yeah. your guess is as good as mine but i think blanca got the right answer mm -hmm. you definitely want to go see your professor um What's kind of cool, what we can think about in this scenario is, do you want your professor to know your name? Or do you want to be like a number in the classroom? So if we're looking at going to a large university where you have 200 people in your classroom, um, you may not get the same level of um, specialized treatment if you go to your professor and ask for help. So that may be something you want to consider. What would you want in this particular moment? Would you want your professor to know that you have been trying your hardest and that a 68 isn't good enough for you? Um, or do you want them to just say, okay, well, maybe you should study. <laughs> so that's one opportunity, one chance to learn here. Um, you guys ready for the next one? Ah, I'm already getting anxiety thinking about it. Woo! Okay, worst case scenario number two. It's the first day of class and you can't find the building or classroom for biology 1214. You're going to be late or miss the class entirely. What are your options? A, you can keep searching. 
that class has to be somewhere. B, find the nearest person and ask for help. Or C, go back to your dorm room and sulk. Were, were you supposed to uh, share, share those? Because we don't see them on the screen. Oh, uh, right. I stopped sharing my screen. <laughs> I'm so happy you told me that. Thank you. How about that? Yes. You can see it. Good. And you'll notice at the bottom left, oh no, you can't even see it. Um, it's dreamcatchercurriculum.com. I'll show you guys um, the link for that too. I can drop it in the um, chat. They have a lot of great resources and they get these, they sent me these really cool um, workbooks and they have, they don't have those workbooks on the website, but they have the same content. So very, very much worthwhile to look into. Yeah. Let's see. We have, we have, um, we have a comment. Uh, I was told that it was possible to schedule your schooling hours so that you could start class at 10. If this is true, then that would definitely be an improvement from having to wake up early and get ready at 530. Um, yes. Let me tell you from, from firsthand experience, yeah. especially leaving, leaving here uh, and going straight to college. Um, I can't wait. I don't know. So, sometimes you might want to leave. Um, uh, keep that same schedule so that you have time to to work or whatever. Like if you if you if you are able to and um, and you're not um, like overloaded with with courses, uh, sometimes you may need to make a little extra money on the side to uh, to support whatever lifestyle you you want. So maybe you want to be able to go to the movies on on the weekends, or maybe you're a gamer like me and want to be able to buy your games or whatever. Like you. You may want to leave that little space for you to be able to uh, to work and uh, and build your resume at the same time, or maybe you want to do an internship or 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 something that's going to help you out in the future. So mm -hmm. um, that's great. Yeah. And um, other cool idea there is if you've done your FAFSA, once you've done your FAFSA, you can determine if you're eligible for federal work study, which would give you the opportunity to work around your schedule at school. So you won't be making as much money. Um, but at least they're flexible. And typically the jobs are, are such that you can study while you're there, if you're really lucky. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Some of us are not morning people. I have to say I'm in, what do you put, early bird? I like to get up really early. My kids don't let me sleep in anymore. So um, I totally get the, the appeal of going and sleeping in. Um, I do have to say some of those first year classes they fill up really quickly and you might end up getting stuck with an 8 a.m. Oh, so painful. But I think you've got great habits in place, so I have a good feeling you'll make it through. Um, and if you go to a different school, I mean, like technical colleges, a lot of those do evening classes. So you could do a, jo a whole job during the day and then make your way to school in the evening. So lots of different options, guys. Just depends on what you're interested in. Uh, let's see. We decide, Blanca decided it was a B. Let's see. I think that's a great idea, asking people for help. Um, what's funny is I, I've worked and gone to school here at Kennesaw State, and I still don't know where things are. So if it's a big campus, it could be really challenging. What would you guys say about walking your schedule before the first day of class? I don't know. I feel like that's a great idea. Yes. <laughs> Um, like, I, I, I heard um, that they're starting to do, uh, do those little local apps for, uh, for school. No way. Yeah. Oh, that would save me. I have a nightmare, a recurring nightmare where I'm late to an exam and I can't find the room. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in school for so long. It is really sad that I still dream of these things <laughs> and that it creates so much anxiety for me. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to interpret the dream, I am all for it. <laughs> uh, maybe it just means I'm like chronically late for life. I don't know. So good news is we have another scenario to play out before you guys get to college. Ah, it doesn't want me to go. How about that? Number three, worst case scenario, you show up for the final exam of the semester, Ooh, but the test isn't in the same location that your class has been. The room is completely empty, but you know it's exam time. Don't panic, guys. We can do this. Are you going to A, immediately check your course syllabus for info, B, try calling or emailing your professor, or C, text a friend from class to ask where to go? Why isn't there a D? Uh, we're going to make up a D. Yeah. <laughs> what is D for you, Anthony? 
all of the above, like yeah. I had to panic. <laughs> yeah. Frantically texting your people. Well, if you text your friend while they're in an exam, that is true. You pull out their phone in the exam, they're gonna get they're gonna fail the exam. But what if they're asleep? Then we just woke them up. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe you did them a favor and got their got them to get up in time for their exam. Um your your professor's probably not gonna give you their phone number, so it's unlikely that that'll be a good option. But emailing them while they're proctoring an exam, also not gonna get you the answer that you need. But you can check your syllabus and most likely it'll be there. Let's hope. Um, I did have that situation come up recently. Um, with an online class, they changed the time. Yeah, COVID man, so, doing crazy things to people. So I have, I have a question, I, I, I'm curious. So if, if they change the time yeah. and you're late, yeah. are, you, are you held liable? For, for that? Well, they had changed it from the beginning of the semester, but I just thought my final exam is going to happen during my class time, right? Yeah. No, final exam time periods are different. And that's something to take into consideration if you're working while you're going to school. Mm. Um, like if you have a really, really um, strict boss and they're not going to let you get off um, and for, to do this exam period outside of your, you know, normal school schedule, I would, one, I'd reconsider the job because a boss that doesn't want you to succeed in school is probably not somebody you want to stick around with very long, but um, yeah, it was very confusing. Um, they ended up like switching it back when they realized that for the whole semester, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go to this exam from 10 to 12 in the middle of my work day. That would be terrible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see what happens next. Uh -huh. You guys having fun yet? Um, I find this so exciting. I don't know. Yeah, I'm learning things. Cool. So worst case scenario, number four, the lab instructor for your physics 1104 course seems rude and unhelpful. You like the lecture professor, but just don't seem to click with the lab instructor. You could A, switch to a different section or time for the lab. B, don't say anything and suck it up. C, go to office hours and discuss your concerns and options. Ooh. Gosh, I like Blanca's choice, but I don't know. I feel like this could go a lot of different ways. Um, I would imagine if you guys are registering for classes, especially sciences, you're going to have to register for two separate sections, the class and the lab. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? But what if you don't want to talk to them? Why would you go to their office hours? Oh, yeah, mm. kind of tricky. If it's early enough in the semester and you aren't losing class time um, and it's just like real quick, like you just switch to a different section, I think that would, could work. But you don't want, you certainly can't do it after a drop ad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Because then you drop the whole thing. We have to start over next semester. That would not be fun. Yeah, and just and just uh, I think I think you mentioned something that that they may not understand is that sometimes your class is divided up into two different sections. So there is that in in class uh, instruction time, and then there's a whole total different thing that you have to schedule as well, which is the lab time, um, depending on on what courses you're taking. And so um, you may have to go to class like go to that class twice that, that week, but one class is lecture, one class is, is lab. Um, that's, that's how it was for, for the tech field too. Yeah, yeah. And I did, I had that experience recently. Uh, I had a lab during the day, loved my professor. I got to my lab at eight o'clock at night. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only did he wear a mask and a face shield, but I couldn't understand them. Mm. on top of it so it was it was quite a challenge and in the science lab there are vent hoods that like suck the air out of the room so it was just this roaring sound i think now that i'm older i can't hear as well that must be what it is but yeah. it was really challenging i made it i made it through i only broke one test tube <laughs> <laughs> i didn't catch anything on fire 
feeling like it was a successful semester. <laughs> well, I heard, I heard that if you don't make mistakes, then you're doing something wrong. Very good point. I wish I could tell myself that more often. <laughs> I think that would probably make things easier. Uh, let's see, guys. We're going to the dormitories. Ah! Worst case scenario number five. Ever since moving to the residence hall, you and your roommate haven't gotten along. Oh, can't tell you how many times this has come up. You cringe at the thought of sharing a space with someone you don't like. A, you can spend as much time as possible away from the room. B, have a tough but respectful convo with your roomie. Or C, seek advice from the resident assistant. Or the RA, if you wanna use the lingo. Oh gosh. Well, I'm conflict avoidance. I can tell you right now, B, would be really hard for me. We just talked about this one um, dorm situation. There were four roommates and um, one of them would try to cook home cooked meals for her boyfriend. So she just tore up the kitchen, with all the dishes and all the messes and then wouldn't clean up afterwards. And everybody was so frustrated, but nobody said anything except for one of the roommates wrote a handwritten note and stuck it on the, mic, on the um, refrigerator and said, can you guys please clean up after yourselves? <laughs> and there was only one of them that wasn't cleaning up after themselves. So everybody knew who the note was directed at. Yeah. It's a little passive aggressive, but. I'm a, I'm a bit of a jerk. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need to clean this up. Like I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it. I, I think I, take it anymore. Yeah, I think for 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 college, I I think the biggest issue was that we had a roommate um, whose whose uh, significant other was over there all the time. <laughs> like, like what a drag. Like go home. <laughs> go. Don't you have your own room? Yeah. Yeah. That is something that comes up a lot. Nobody likes to talk about it, you know, because it's kind of uncomfortable, but um, talk to your RA if you want. But usually people find it more respectful if you go straight to the person. It's kind of like if you have a problem with a person that you work with and you go to their boss instead of going directly to the person, that can create a lot of tension. So if you feel safe, go to the person, do it respectfully. Gosh, if you guys need help, just let me know. I can't say that I know all the answers, but sometimes I give good advice. Uh, I think we're, we, have, we have room for a few more. Um, what, what there you it? go, Antonio. Yeah. You did Job Corps, that's cool. I would love to hear more about that experience. It seems really interesting on paper, I, but I don't, I haven't actually talked to anybody that's done it in real life. So hopefully it was an overall good experience. Yeah. What do you think? One more scenario? Yeah. And I, I, I definitely want, uh, want you to, uh, I, I know you probably uh, have a whole presentation um, um, on, on Gear Up, but uh, no. you don't have a whole, like the no. flyer? What? No. Uh, that was it. My like two second spiel. No, no your flight like oh uh, I oh gosh I have I have your I have your flyer and and everything that I send out uh, to, to kids or whatever. If, if anybody wants help, we're here. That's mm -hmm. really what we do. Um, we just have a lot of weird restrictions apparently for you guys to participate. But these are fun things to think about. Like, do you want to live with people? When you go to campus, a lot of campuses right now have like COVID restrictions on, on living spaces. But um, I had to had three people in a room the size of my office when I went to college. Oh. And one of them talked in her sleep. Really? Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> Do you have recordings? Huh? Do you have recordings? No. It just always caught, well, okay. This was pre-cell phones with like cool technology. Oh, yeah, funny. yeah. I'm aging myself again. <laughs> um, so, worst case scenario number six, guys. 
Oh, and we can call this, it's COVID, but we can say, it's the flu. You woke up with a fever and body aches and you can't make it to class. At this rate, you may never get out of bed again. What can you do? Contact or visit the campus health center right away. Go back to bed or try to sleep it off. Call and email your professors about having to miss class. I feel like this would be a sequential choice. C first, then B, and then maybe if things don't get better, A. I don't know, guys. Now with COVID, they do not want you coming to class with symptoms. So you send an email, you are technically covered for two weeks, <laughs> at least for now. Who knows what it'll look like in a couple more months. Um, either way, I did want to show you the last um, website, the Dreamcatcher curriculum one, because I found like their resources to be really cool. So I'm going to see if I can pull that up really quickly. Um, while, while you do that, um, in the chat, uh, for, the, for those who are interested, uh, since we will be doing uh, more, more workshops, I am going to put the link to the, uh, to the quiz for the air fryer, uh, for the air fryer and other appliances. You, I think the deadline is Monday to, um, to, to answer the questions and uh, then you'll be up I for our next, our, our, next, uh, our next cooking podcast where I think we're gonna be cooking wings and stuff like that using, using the air fryer. Oh, you're making me hungry. <laughs> so, and we're gonna, and we're gonna for, the, for those who, who win it, you'll, you'll get the, um, we'll give you a, a gift card to get the food so you can do it live with us. So cool. I hope I can get in on that. <laughs> um, so if you go to dreamcatchercurriculum.com backslash resources, you can look for parent and guardian resources here and student resources. Um, and the information that I was pulling from today is from the educator section. I'm giving you all my secrets, guys. And um, from earlier, the Gear Up Georgia webpage, you can go there anytime. Um, gear Up. Oh gosh, you know, I'm beginning to think I don't know how to type either. But Gear Up Georgia, if you go to the upcoming events tab, you can find all sorts of things that are happening. A lot of which, like the one today at eight o'clock, the SCT versus ACT, um, is open, I think, to everybody. And you can register. Ooh. And I'll type um, in the, the, dream, the dream catcher one. Yeah, did you want me to type it in? Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for putting that in the um, in the chat there. That's yeah. perfect. So what what is the dream catcher one again? Um, there's just resources on there that I, um, for students and guardians getting ready to support their people on their way to college. Um, and it's not just um, college stuff. There's a lot of life skills stuff in there too. So it might be fun dinner time talk or when you have to go for a ride and you're sitting in traffic. Um, I'm curious, can we, can we go through it? Oh, well, actually, can we see, uh, see your events then go, then go through the, uh, the dream catcher one? Yeah, for sure. Um, so upcoming next week, we have ACT and SAT um, test prep classes starting. Um, so if you do register for Gear Up Georgia, we can go ahead and get you into those. Um, this one looks really cool. Strategies to reduce anxiety, increase motivation, and study smarter. I feel like I need that in my life. Yes. <laughs> this could so, be really fun. Yeah, I can I can attest to that one from doing the podcast and, and all of our young people that are in colleges. They say that one of the things that they took for granted is the mental health um, aspect that um, uh, they, they say when, when their mental health declined, that means that their grades declined, that means that they got on academic probation uh, for school and, and things like that. And it affected so much more. And they say that they, they always uh, say uh, to make sure kids know to, to be highly aware of their mental health needs. Um, so definitely take that into consideration. Like it's, it's good to do that preventive maintenance on your, on your mind. Agreed. And what's really cool, um, if you do go to the gearup.kennesaw.edu website, we can um, point you in the direction of universities in Georgia that have free counseling on, on campus. Um, so if not, that's probably a concern right now, but sometimes therapy can cost a lot of money. 
<laughs> so it might be really good to take advantage of that while you're a student and just have somebody work with you. Um, so if you go to services, a little bit down, doo -doo 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 -doo, the college on campus resource list. And I have to, this is where I want to highlight Kennesaw State because we do have counseling on, on site. Um, we have a food pantry for when times get a little tricky and you're not quite sure what you're going to eat tomorrow. You can come here and shop. Um, and by here, I mean literally outside my door. I have a grocery store, so it's kind of cool. Um, a lot of other universities and colleges are trying to implement what we have implemented here at Kansas State. So um, while we're not the only ones that do it, I do think we do it really well. So um, like I said, not biased. <laughs> yeah, I, but, I, um, I think who, who, who uh, I think uh, GSU has one, Georgia State. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I haven't been inside of it. Um, I haven't been in it, in inside of any of the food pantries, but I, I know that that's one of the things that they was working on. Yes. Yep. GSU definitely has one. Um, we did try to go school by school to include. It looks like almost everybody has um, access to some kind of food pantry. I would imagine they don't all let you shop and pick and choose what you want, but um, it's just a really, this is a really great resource when you are looking to see who's going to support you best. Yeah. And somebody else that you really want to get in touch with is the Embark rep on the campus. They will be a really great resource for you um, when you do finally decide to go. Um, and if you do decide to go to Kennesaw State, I do want to like do a little plug uh, for a really cool program. Um, Ascend with KSU Cares is um, we can pay for your housing deposit. We can pay for your first um, housing payment, which is over $1,400. Um, and I think we can do all sorts of other really great opportunities, like get you on campus a week before classes start. So you get to move in without all the chaos of normal move in days. So definitely check it out. Um, we would really, really love to have you join us um, with that process. I can drop my email in the chat. I didn't even um, know about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's... I think they do I'm have a game design. And I do know one of the professors that works in that field, and he is pretty incredible and very closely tied with the foster care um, community here in Cobb County. It's pretty impressive. And we have, uh, what is that esports thing? I don't know if you guys like playing like games that are sports. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, go team. That's where my sports experience ends. Um, I usually root for the underdog, even though I have no idea what makes them the underdog. Um, either way, <laughs> um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening around here. So I'm sure you'll find wherever you decide to go to college, if that's your goal, um, your niche, if you want to call it that. And um, you'll find a group of friends that you get to experience lots of fun things with. Um, but definitely, you know, reach out if there's anything you need, especially if you come to KSU. I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. And gosh, Anthony, I have talked so much. I'm so sorry. No, you're not done talking because you're supposed to go back to um, um, to the Dreamcatcher curriculum. Dreamcatcher website. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Dreamcatchercurriculum.com. Um, I really like them. I met them at a conference a ways back. Um, mm -hmm. COVID, when I could travel. Um, if you go to the resources, they do a scholarship every year. So that could be a really cool place to ch um, check out. Mm -hmm. um, but go down, let's see, or do we have a lot of students on the line or yes. more? Like, we have some students online as well as on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to go to the students part. I think we'll find all sorts of exciting things there. So click here. Um, there's a checklist. What grade are you in? You can pick which grade you're in and like It'll help narrow down the huge list of things to be considering. Um, go ahead and check that out. Let's go. Let's um, go to the tenth grade one since that's what that's what Blanca was. She was tenth grade. Great. We can go there. I'm excited. And what's so cool is it's got check boxes, and I like check boxes. Um, Dreamcatcher is just going to be a site for you to find extra help, um, and it's something that is vetted, I guess is the best way, because I think when you go online, you can find a lot of junky stuff. 
Um, yes. This is not junky. This is um, well thought out and um, only with your best interest in mind. So um, this is your checklist, Blanca. And I would imagine you probably already checked off a lot of these things because it seems like you've got your plans in place moving forward. And it's okay for them to change, um, but now you know where you can come back to. Um, so look at that. Uh, I think there was a, there's a question. So can you sum, summarize exactly what Dreamcatcher is supposed to do? Yes. Yeah, so um, it is just a site with information for you. Mm -hmm. um, and a kind of a nice place to start if you're not quite sure where to go first. So as you as you see, um, I, I think that's Antonio that asked that question. So as you see, like um, when she clicked on like the checklist, like we went up under students, and um, it's giving you the checklist for students what you what you should be doing at each level uh, at at each grade or whatever, and it's giving you a checklist as well as the links that you need to go to to complete those things. Uh, I find it interesting. Um, um, it has other tools like your extracurricular, um, a budget template. And then step by step, step by step guide to completing your FAFSA and things like that. So it's I'm here, yeah, because that can be really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And then I guess what's that new just right, uh, right grammar guy? I guess that's for for when you're completing your college applications. <laughs> if there wasn't something more important than making sure you didn't misspell something. It would probably be in your college application. <laughs> Use Grammarly. <laughs> Gram yeah. I love Grammarly. Yeah. Um, and if you do end up signing up for Europe, um, you have access to tutor.com, which has people that will help review your essays for you, which I love. Um, I was telling people that I like tend to use the same words over and over and over again. And I'm like, this just doesn't sound good, uh, but I don't know what to do next. So it could be really good. Um, college students, you don't have to, um, you don't have to wait, but if you do wait until you get to college to do some of the stuff, you can check out their resources there too. Um, so that's a really cool place to go. I told you about our Gear Up Georgia page not just the calendar page, but we also have the virtual services and resources. So I was telling you about some of the career exploration webinars. Those can be found on here, like our YouTube page. Ugh, hurts my eyes, guys. We're getting to that point in the day. You can go on tours of colleges if you want to know what they look like, like going to U visit. Um, yeah, all sorts of fun things. And these, um, if you're in your senior year and you haven't done your FAFSA yet, go set up an appointment with one of your um, Georgia Student Finance Commission representatives. And I think we're going to talk more about that next time we see each other. Are yeah. you thinking? Yes, yes, definitely. Talk money. Yeah, I, I think I think we're going to do a whole FAFSA like how to how to uh, how to do your FAFSA uh, uh, work workshop because I want to make sure that. Uh, that our young people know what to put on their fast bus, um, yeah. uh, so that so that they're not getting gypped by Uncle Sam. Right, like it can get you, it can launch you into rolling in the dial, guys. This yeah. is very exciting. Um, and the cool thing about that, like I know that a lot of you will have the added benefit of getting E two B and Pell and things like that. But if you want to walk away with a check, like get paid to go to school, um, start applying for scholarships because once you've met, you know, once you've covered your fees and your costs of going to college, everything else is yours. This could be it. This could be the moment. The woman that ran and um, that runs the scholarship academy, she walked away with checks every semester and I think even bought herself a car, which would be so cool. I wish I wouldn't know. Like, I wish I was that savvy. Like, <laughs> I that's what I'm saying. About scholarships, like, I'm, I'm learning. Makes me want to go back to school. Almost, almost yeah. go back to school. But not quite. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Don't feel stressed out. Don't let it stress you out. If you want somebody to like walk you through what to do tomorrow, I like telling people what to do. So, <laughs> I'm really here to help, though. Um, I know it can be really overwhelming, so um, don't let it overwhelm you. It says, what is the um, best way to apply uh, for scholarships? Because I am almost lost in that regard. Well, good. 
good thing I have you on here because there are so many different really interesting resources. If you don't, um, if you don't uh, qualify for the Scholarship Academy access to the Sphere of Georgia, they have a really great um, toolkit. I'm trying to remember where. Oh, Gear Up Georgia webinar recordings. Do you see this, guys? I'm going to pop you through to the Gear Up website, the YouTube page. And if you go, I'm blind, but I'm almost there, guys. Just give me one more second to find it. The videos, the videos, the videos. Scholarships, scholarships, scholarships. Does anybody see scholarships? Oh, networking. That's it. Money. Scholarship Academy right there. Yeah. Anything that says the Scholarship Academy here, guys, this one. Networking and branding webinar. First, you want to like know what your story is and which direction you're going to go. Like, is your story something transformative that has gotten you to where you are today to make you decide that you want to go do this? Um, that this is another one, building your brag sheet is a good one to watch. These are all really great things that are going to point you in the right direction. Um, for like, if you know what school you want to go to, first you're going to go and try to get in before March and get your application in for the scholarships that are from the university before March. A lot of that money is gone by March of your senior year. So um, if you want institutional scholarships, well, that's a really good point, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Any ways to find out that? I have to say that it is an investment. Yeah. It's an investment in your time, okay? Um, but it's worthwhile because it could pay off in the end. And yeah. if you do it right, it will. It's not going to be a waste of energy because you're going to focus on scholarships that are directed at your skill set, what your future goals are, um, where you're planning on going, like what community that's in. Um, you'll want to look, once you look at institutional scholarships, you'll want to look at community level scholarships. And if you're looking at big dollar scholarships, the number of people applying to that means that your chance of getting them are far, it's far lower than if you focused on your, um, your smaller dollar scholarships. And that's how they have the success that they've had with the Scholarship Academy, because you build on them. So $500 here, $500 there, $1,000 here. Those are the things that add up quickly and you have a better chance of winning those scholarships or earning them is pretty much how that goes. Or you can work. So it depends on how you want to spend your time. Work, 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 work. It's going to take work either way. I wish there was like an easy button for that. <laughs> but there is definitely a way to make it easier. So if I can help out, I'm around. Mm -hmm. And if you're part of Empowerment, um, I know that you should probably be receiving our emails and we're going to uh, start doing more things around uh, college, um, like finding mentors and, and things like that. So um, so make sure that you're signed up for, um, for Empowerment and, and, and our newsletters, because um, I send out newsletters overall to, to everybody that's on my newsletter list. And then there are certain ones that I send out to 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 um to our empowerment um young leaders um so just a just a small shameless plug to uh to be a part of this awesome uh, awesome group as as well as i uh also write letters of recommendations for uh for young people who who do different uh works for us i don't write them for everybody but you have to like i do write them for those that that help uh, facilitate workshops, that do trainings, that volunteer for events and things like that. Because on your scholarships and on your uh, entrance applications, they're gonna ask for like, are you are you involved in the community? <laughs> like they, they wanna see that that you're doing volunteer hours and, and things like that. So okay. um, we uh, we try we try to hook up our members. So shameless plug. <laughs> so exciting. Thanks for having me, Anthony. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I do look forward because we're going to be doing some more things to try to make sure that everybody is ready for, uh, for, for college. So 
um, making I'm making sure that I'm directing people to to this uh, to this webinar as well as to your to your websites uh, that that you suggested. Actually, that's going in, in some of my um, some of my toolkits. So uh, so Ooh. thank you. I really appreciate you and your team uh, for for doing this. So happy for the opportunity. Yeah. And you guys have an email, so anything you need, I'll be around. Yep. Uh, well, other than that, uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, please sign up for our, for our newsletters and, and things like that. As a matter of fact, I'll put that in the chat so that you have all of that information so that there is no excuse um, why, you, why you aren't receiving it, everything. Um, and I, I need I, to get on that. Yeah, and I no. believe uh, I believe uh, Miss Katie she put her information in there as well. And so what I will do is I will leave this up for uh, for about two minutes so that you can scroll through and gather. Click on click on all the links. Just click on all the links. Have have your Chrome um, tab bar just maxed out. Um, oh. That way you go back to it after after I shut this whole thing down. And if you're on if you're on our Facebook, um, we have we have the links already or. We, it'll be streaming, so you can go back and look at it there. Uh, but other than that, thank you all for joining. Thank you, uh, Katie, KSU, and Gear Up for uh, for for helping us out, helping our young people out. Um, I definitely look forward to doing more. Uh, so uh, everybody, have a great day. Enjoy the rain. Stay out of the hill. <laughs> Wear your mask <laughs> and be safe. So. Bye, Anthony. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Uh.